Hey guys, Kelsey here from roughandtumblefarmhouse.com and today I'm going to tell you how to make your own very simple DIY foaming hand soap. Now the reason why I decided to pick my own hand soap is because my husband, he, how do I say this? He likes the finer things in life and I prefer a nice old fashioned bar soap. He likes a liquid type hand soap. He doesn't like kind of the mess from a bar soap. And so the soap he was buying, the liquid hand soap he was getting was a uh, botanical organic, which is great and I love it, but it's very expensive. It's like $28 a bottle. And so we're trying to do a little bit of budgeting and being a little more frugal. And so I looked into how to make our own soap. And so it's going down from, I hate to even say, it, I think it was $28 a bottle on this hand soap he was buying. Uh, it's cutting down to maybe a dollar per bottle and it's still organic, naturally derived everything. So if you're looking to kind of budget a little bit friendlier and still have a nice smelling, chic looking and organic natural hand soap, this is the video for you. So this is a very simple recipe. It is just two ingredients, and the first thing you're gonna need is a liquid Castile soap. Now, let me back up a second because I know you're wanting to learn how to make your own soap, and so you're like, well, why do I have to start with a soap to make a soap? If you wanna make your own soap from scratch, even a liquid soap, it is a much more complicated process. So this is more of a dilution, I guess, of an already existing soap that is still gonna be very effective for sanitizing, cleaning, moisturizing, even with this recipe. So if you wanna make your own actual soap, soap from scratch, that's a whole bigger can of worms that, that you're opening there. So again, we're gonna start with a liquid Castile soap. And Castile, I used to think it meant it was made just from olive oil was kind of the pure base of it. But actually a Castile soap is any sort of vegetable oil based soap. So in soaps, you can have them made from animal fats a lot of the time, uh, but a Castile soap means it comes from coconut oil, olive oil, even a mix of vegetable oils. So of course, probably the most famous and a lot of people's go-to for a liquid Castile soap is Dr. Bronner's. I have used Dr. Bronner's for years. I love Dr. Bronner's soap because it works well, it smells nice, it's organic. If you check out their website, they are just a very kind of eco-conscious, socially aware, business that makes sure their workers are being fa paid fairly, that they're sourcing their ingredients in responsible ways. So I have a lot of respect for their company and their product works really nicely. So this is the first thing you're going to need is a bottle of Dr. Bronner soap. Now I personally really like the almond and the peppermint and I already have these in my shower to use as shampoo and body wash. So if you already have a soap that you like, just kind of use from those because we aren't going to take too much of this for our recipe. And, but if there's another specific scent you want, they have eucalyptus, citrus, what else do they have that's really good? They have unscented, which is nice too, uh, if you have, if it's, if it's for babies or you have sensitive skin or something like that. So they have quite a few different options. So today we're gonna be using the almond just because it smells really nice and clean and a little bit, I wanna say like luxurious. It's just, it's a nice scent. Next thing you're gonna need is distilled or filtered water. Distilled is best if you can get it from a grocery store or something like that where it has been through kind of extensive filtration or if you have a filter at home that's honestly just what I am using. You want to avoid tap water because it's going to have things in it that might affect how long your soap lasts. So we are adding oil to water and so this soap does definitely have more of a shelf life than a soap you get at the store that has more preservatives in it. So having water that's as clean as possible is really important to keeping your soap lasting long and smelling nice because otherwise what's gonna happen is the water is gonna turn the oil rancid and you're gonna start to get a funky smelling soap. It'll still clean you, it's just gonna smell funky. So after you have your Dr. Bronner's soap on hand, kind of your base that we're working from, and then you have your water, whether it's from a filter at home or you're getting distilled from the grocery store, next thing you need is your foaming hand pump. Now this doesn't really work as well if you just have like a regular pump top, it just doesn't, the oil and the water are gonna separate more versus the pump top, it really combines it nicely. So you do need a foaming soap pump top. Now I got this whole bottle and the top on Amazon, I will link below with an affiliate link, uh, just cause I, I'm always a sucker for amber glass jars. They have some really cute mason jar ones though too. You can even just get the top that's foaming and stick it on a mason jar you already have if you're really trying to save cash. Or if you already have a foaming pump top from, 
I know Bath and Body Works or wherever you get like foaming, foaming soap tops, you can absolutely just reuse those as well. So once you have your bottle in hand, you wanna know what size your bottle is because we are gonna be mixing the soap and the water at a specific ratio. So these bottles that I have are 13 ounces. Now on your bottle, it is either going to say fluid ounces or ounces. And if it's in fluid ounces, that's the volume of the bottle, which means kind of how much space is in it. And if it's in just ounces, that is the weight of what is inside the bottle. And I know it's kind of a funky thing. It's a thing that I, <laughs> I've been dabbling in candle making and that's something too, with either, it's either the, the volume of the jar or the weight of what the jar can hold. And it's kind of sort of funky, but we're gonna kind of give you a shortcut easy thing on that. So if the, the size of your jar is measured, if they give you just ounces, not fluid ounces, that's really simple. We're gonna take that number, ounces, so this one was 13 ounces, and I'm gonna divide that by four because our recipe is going to take one part of liquid soap to three parts of our filtered water. So that's four parts all together, <laughs> one part being this and three parts being this equals four. So you divide that out, it ends up being, for me, 3.25. Now, if your soap jar container measurement came in the fluid ounces. A little trick we're gonna do, and this isn't completely 100% accurate, but this is kind of the quick, cheap, easy way to do it, is you're gonna fill your jar with water, and then you're going to pour that water out into a measuring cup or a cup that is on a scale. So set your cup on the scale, zero out the scale, you need a scale that can measure in ounces, fill your container up, pour it in, and see what the number is. That is gonna give you roughly the amount of ounces that you're gonna be looking for because water and the soap are gonna weigh a little slightly bit different, but it still, it works. It's an easy way to make this happen. It's not an exact science, this mixing process, so don't stress about it too much. Alternatively, if you want to, you can just eyeball it and know that you need to fill your jar. Excuse me, my cat's coming in to say hello. You can fill your jar if you figure, all right, this is how big it is, roughly divided by fourths, and put soap up to here, and fill the rest with water. You can absolutely do that too. If you wanna be slightly more precise, you can measure it out here like I'm doing. So again, for my jar, here you can see I am measuring out 3.25 ounces of soap, and then I'm going to measure out 9.75 ounces of my filtered water. Then I'm gonna add them both together into my container, give it just a little bit of a gentle sort of back and forth, easy does it sort of shake. <laughs> Not so much a shake as a, I don't know, a gentle roll to try and combine them a little better. And that's it, you are ready to go. You have a foaming hand soap that's going to smell nice and work well. Now I have found that since it's an oil-based soap that this actually conditions your hands pretty nicely, that it's not stripping away stuff from your hands too much, so I don't find I need to add really anything extra. You can, if you want to, put in a couple drops of a vitamin E oil. That also will help extend the shelf life. So that's one, th <laughs> that's one thing when you are choosing your container. If you know you don't go through that much soap, maybe pick a smaller container. We go through a fair amount. We've got kids, we've got a farm, we're washing our hands all the time. So I'm with kind of a bigger container. But if you are putting this in say like a guest bathroom or something that you don't use very often, then go ahead and get a smaller container. Otherwise the soap isn't gonna last as long. Now if you want, you can use a Castile soap like Dr. Bronner's as a dish soap as well. In that case, you aren't actually really going to dilute it as much, you're just gonna put a couple of drops, or I think it's like one to two tablespoons. You just put this, just the straight up soap directly into your sink. I'd probably use maybe like a mint or a citrus one if I was gonna do that, but this is the ratio. Again, just to review, one part of soap and three parts of your filtered distilled water is going into your bottle. Get a little bit of a shake. A couple drops of vitamin E oil if you want to add a little more conditioning, preserve the shelf life a little bit longer, but I have found that for us, we go through this before it starts to get funky. And you'll know if it's getting funky, like the smell of a rancid kind of oil is very distinct. So if you're still put on, you're like, oh, that's a little bit weird, then it's kind of gone, it's gone awry. Dump it out, wash your bottle really well, let it dry and go ahead and put in some more soap. All right, so easy peasy. If you have any questions at all about making your own DIY foaming hand soap, please pop them in the comments. I am happy to help. Otherwise, I hope if you also have a spouse that has expensive taste, you are able to waylay them and trick them into having a much cheaper <laughs> yet just as effective soap. 
Thanks so much for watching. We will see you next week for more farming, family food, and fortitude here at our rough and tumble farmhouse.